science. We get experimental get science. We're curious, non judgmental. So, oh, oh, y'all, we have something cool. I know, I know. We, we, look, we, we, I always say we have something cool, but this is exciting. Any guesses as to who that is? Chat, we found another one. Yes, season two of, of, uh, of science pond water with science and we found another one chat we found a jeffrey y'all we found a jeffrey the planarian can we t listen yes because y'all last year we lost the jeffrey would y'all like us to feed jeffrey would y'all like a feeding experiment with jeffrey the planarian i'll have to go get some liver but we could feed jeffrey if y'all are into it yes y'all would like to have a jeffrey feeding Okay, I need to get some uh, liver paste from the freezer, and we will need to thaw it for a few minutes, and then we'll give Jeffrey some food. What is a Jeffrey Epoch? Prepare to have your mind blown. Epoch, that is a Jeffrey. That swimming around right there, Epoch, is our Jeffrey the Planarian. That creature is, again, a flatworm known as a Planarian. What's amazing is if you cut it down the middle, it regenerates. Uh, it will regrow a new tail, and the tail part that you chopped regrows a brand new head and a new brain. And researchers are trying to figure out how the heck that happens, and using it as a means of um, like potential regeneration research. Uh, we will hopefully, with the food, attract into the center. Uh, they eat uh, liver. They eat like a raw liver. That's what I'm having to, to round out right now for the moment. All right, so. Oh, it's so gross. We're gonna give this little planarian some food. There we go. Food is in there now. Let's pull it up on the live feed. So this here is a calf liver. That is what they eat in a research setting. In a lab, it's a, it has to be very clean, organic. It's like an insanely specific diet that you have to feed them but up oh, there he goes he's already going for the food he's so excited free heathen the specificity is kind of nuts it seems like so they are this weird flavor of immortal where they can live an extremely long time because they have those stem cells that allow them to regenerate um but if you don't get them the right food source they can pick up an infection and die from that so it seems like Again, while from injuries, they can survive pretty intently. If you have them in some like a really dirty sample, they're more likely to, to not survive. Uh, so no, Pericles, they're usually bottom feeders in the sense that they'll be feeding on uh, like dead and decaying animal matter. So like, you know, in the wild, they can survive off dirty things, no problem. But if we want to keep them alive in our in a lab setting, or in this case, uh, in this for the stream, uh, we need to make sure that we're giving them sterile uh, food sources as best as we can. And you can see he's starting to starting to check out the food. So he's got a really interesting tongue. Uh, his tongue and his his mouth and his butt are the same opening. And so if he comes over and goes for the food, you'll actually see his tongue and mouth come out of his stomach, and it's almost like a little grabby mouth part that he eats with and that's the same uh, tube that they poop with um, so it's a very unique feeding system as well if we're able to get him to eat what my hope is is that we can keep him in a in a glass in a petri dish and then split him at a later point so we can actually do our own regeneration experiment and make more planarians we did it last year there's no reason why we can't do it this year chat uh, we're going to darken it up a little bit. I'm going to turn up the light manually. We have a flatworm here. Flatworms are really remarkable creatures in that if you split it down the center or on its, uh, like, horizontally, vertically, whatever, you chop it, usually with a razor blade, it will regenerate. It will regrow that body part. In fact, if you cut off the head, the head just grows a new tail. But the tail that you cut off grows a brand new head, a new brain, all the things. And uh, we're trying to feed them. So this is a uh, freshly minced liver. And now he's finally inspecting the food. Go, Jeffrey, go, go, Jeffrey, go. 
There he is. He's swimming around in his food. There we go, Smikes. So he probably got a little snack there. So his his uh, mouth is in the center of his gut, and it comes out like a tube. And it, it even has a little bit of like movement-like behavior to it. So actually, Smikes, you can see that, that discoloration right there. It's a little bit more pink. Um, that is that he, he did in fact eat. And I'm saying he, y'all, um, there is no uh, sex with these animals. Uh, they reproduce by uh, splitting, so almost by budding. Uh, we just call him Jeffrey because our Psycom character, Planarian, is named Jeffrey. And I just get caught up in calling him that, but there is no sex of these animals, so that's that's not a, that's not an issue on that front. So, and there we there we go. We're getting some we're getting some eating. There we go. All right. Inspecting the food now. So it looks like that we are having some feeding behavior now. Poo trick. So you can cut diagonally as well. Actually, you can chop a bunch of different times. Um, and it will make even more animals. So you're, you're not limited to a single cut. You can chop a bunch of times and it'll make a bunch of little planarians. Uh, so poo trick, interestingly enough, they... There's no sexual reproduction here. They just reproduce by splitting. So in the wild, right, there isn't a razor blade that can cut them, usually. In our pond, there might be. Uh, but instead, what it is is they stick their butt to a substrate, like a, a branch underwater or what have you, and they just pull really, really hard. And that splits them into two. So there's no male and female in this particular species. It's just... They just split their bodies and that's how they reproduce you know we don't want to split him after he's eaten um if you split them after they've eaten they they're likely to contaminate like their the gut tissue and everything that's coming out is likely to contaminate their water and they could die um so it's important to keep them uh, as clean as possible so what we do is we feed them and then like next week we can chop them in half and we can watch them regenerate over the course of about a week. And I think that's a really, really cool thing to be able to do. I got really excited because we found this planarian swimming and I, all I did was I looked on the side of the container and I just saw him swimming on the glass. And it looks like there's actually another one. Let me grab this second planarian. There we go, there's our second vial of a planarian. We'll give this little one some food as well. I, so I don't know why all of a sudden we're finding all these planarians here. Yep, but there's our other one. There's our next one. Oh, and this one's actually regenerating. Y'all, you can see this one split recently. It does not have eyes. So what you can see, again, it's a, a little bit zany of an image because it's swimming around. That right there is where the eyes should be, but you see how it's much lighter in color at this tip. That's because there was a fresh split point there. And that split point is why um, we don't see the eyes. That's where the eyes should be, but we're not getting any eyes on that particular site. For example, if we compare to this one, we zoom in, there are its eyes right there. And then here's again, another one, two planarian. There's, all right, there we go. There is the regular one that we just had. You can see from its eye spots. This one was actually trying to sneak out of the container, so I, I put it over into this one. There he is. You can actually see there's a little bit more pink in his belly, and that right there is planarian poop. So he just had a poops. Because we have two now, we'll save both. We'll put them into a container, and we'll uh, watch them over the course of a week, and we'll feed them more, and then we'll do more, um, we'll do experiments with them. But there is, there is one of them right here. Uh, if they don't reproduce sexually, how do they develop biodiversity? So Pericles, a lot of, so these splits, while you can suggest that and think that you have um, a clonal population, it does facilitate a lot of mutation for them to take to take place. So this mutation will introduce biodiversity for the for these animals. So it's just as you're splitting and you're regenerating an entire body, you're more you're likely to have some errors and those errors will introduce some uh, biodiversity on that front. Uh, here, actually y'all, there's the eye spot right there. 
and then here are all the you can even see outlines of the cells you can't see the stem cells here we can't make out the population but you do you all see the color difference here in the light color and the darker color this darker color is like fat reserves and then this pink color here is the food that it just recently ate um in nature they will tell themselves yes they will tear themselves up to reproduce exactly golden act yeah and so it doesn't appear to hurt them that's right which is which is strange there must have sensory components but we don't fully understand how how that all works there is yet another y'all i don't know what's happening but we're catching all the planarians today y'all i do not know what i just grabbed there are so many planarians in here that's another planarian that we found tonight uh given how many we have in here my suspicion is that there is gonna be a fair bit that we can split i found another one the only real difference is that we have had some a lot of rain and there was some visible runoff that i saw at that part of the lake and so i wonder if that's something that contributed to that finding yeah a nutrient change it's just interesting from an environmental perspective nothing's really different about that area again beyond there being runoff now what that could mean so some of these planarians do live in just like damp dirt and it's possible that the dirt ran off into the the pond and that's what gave them you know a little bit more headway into the that particular source again it was interesting to see as much runoff as we 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 saw this past week so that's one possibility of what we're able to see but maybe it's a totally different uh, example of what's going on. There is another one. So I'm curious as to see how you pointed out, like, next week, if we go back and take from the same spot, will we get another bloom of these planarians or not? Um, I, again, I keep just grabbing them, but it's really exciting to get these planarians so that we're able to do some experiments with them, you know, later in the week. That that is a, a broad-reaching thing. They're pretty sturdy in the sense that we're able to do stuff with them, and they're probably gonna they're like their survival rate is pretty high, so it's it's not hard to um to keep them from you know to making sure to survive on that front. That's just a it's just a good component as well. So actually, what's cool is you can when you split them, pimp cap, you can start seeing their cells move. And those moving cells are already the cells that are going to be leading to that regenerative regenerative state. So it's a really fun thing that you can like see when it's actually starting to happen. And uh, the reason why we're not doing it is tonight is because I made I fed them today. If you feed them, you shouldn't split them until afterwards. Wish I could chop off my arm and regenerate and you with new chronic pain. Safira's mama, I would love to do that to my shoulders and pull in a brand new shoulder um, and body parts. I would be all about that. Unfortunately, I cannot be yet in that state. So I'm not sure what other stream you're gonna find where they're gonna be doing, you know, live planarian regeneration experiments and talking about the biology behind them. I can't imagine 